Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my channel. My name's Marissa, and today I am doing something a little bit different. So you guys know, of course, that I am a college graduate, and I actually like to do research. That was probably one of my favorite things to do in college was the uh, research papers, the research projects, because I love digging into things. So today I thought I would kind of incorporate that into my booktube channel, of course, by doing some research on some terms that I have heard in the booktube community, but I have no freaking clue what they mean. Now, I may be calling myself out a little bit here by admitting all of this on camera, but that's fine. I am totally okay with being ignorant in some ways, but making up for it by actually doing my research and looking this stuff up. So anyway, without any further preamble, let's just get into the video. So the first one really that I wanted to look up is magical realism. Now, I understand the basic premise of magical realism. I just don't understand what exactly it is supposed to encompass because I think I've referred to books as magical realism before without really understanding it very well. So I went ahead and got all these tabs open looking up definitions. So this one is actually from a master class. Um, so magical realism is a genre of literature that depicts the real world as having an undercurrent of magic or fantasy. Magical realism is a part of the realism genre of fiction. Uh, the world is still grounded in the real world, but fantastical elements are considered normal in this world, like fairy tales, magical realism novels, and short stories blur the lines between fantasy and reality. Hmm. Interesting. See, I'm trying to think of... I'm trying to think of, like... Oh, so here's some magical realism novels. Um, these None of these are really... Yeah, none of these are really... Um, sparking anything for me but I get it I completely understand um I honestly don't think I've really ran across one that is actually magical realism because I think what I've used for this was uh, the Dresden Files which is not really a magical realism because magic is not like openly accepted by the general populace so I think that has to be present in order for it to be magical realism um so yeah I completely understand where they were going with so hey now I know so the next one is sapphic romance. Now, I've heard this said numerous times, and in context, I did kind of understand that it refers to, um, you know, women liking other women and female-female romance and things like that. So I did kind of get that from the context, but I heard people say it quite a few times, and I'm like, what does that even mean? Like, it just didn't click for me. I've never heard it said like that before. But of course, now that I heard it on booktube, I was actually rewatching um, episodes of Glee. And I heard it said in there too. And I was like, how did I miss that? Like the first couple of times I rewatched that show. So the next one, of course, is urban fantasy. Again, I know I've referred to things as urban fantasy before. So okay, look right here, urban fantasy series, this is the Dresden Files. So let's get a better a type of fantasy fiction in which a narrative is set in a city. Really? That's it? <laughs> that's, okay, that's interesting um, that that's literally the only qualification. Um, so the difference between fantasy and urban fantasy. Contemporary fantasy set in the present time. Urban fantasy is the same with a difference that is specifically set in a city or a densely populated area. Okay, yeah, I kind of understand that. I don't, I still don't really understand why that needed its own like subgenre, I guess. Um, but people create all kinds of strange sub subgenres for things. So yeah, okay, that's interesting. So the next one is, of course, gothic horror or gothic fiction. So gothic horror is a genre or mode of literature and film that combines fiction and horror, death, and at times romance. Its origin is attributed to English author Horace Walpole. Um, blah, blah, blah. Gothic fiction tends to place emphasis on both emotion and a pleasurable kind of terror, serving as an extension of the romantic literary movement that was relatively new at the time. Hmm. I still d don't really understand why it has to be gothic, though. So the name Gothic, which really refers to the Goths and then came to mean German, refers to Gothic architecture of the medieval era of European history in which many of these stories take place. 
This extreme form of romanticism was very popular throughout Europe, especially among the English and German language writers and artists. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I just, so, um, like, horror slash romance, I guess. Um, yeah, I still don't understand why it needs to be gothic horror, though, and not just, like, romance horror. I'm not sure. But that's interesting. I, I definitely did not understand the definition of that. So the next one is something that I'm relatively new to hearing is a uh, space opera. So it looks like a novel movie or television program set in outer space, typically of a simplistic and melodramatic nature. So pretty much any sci-fi in space? Um, interplanetary battles, chivalric romance and risk-taking set mainly or entirely in outer space. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess I kind of get that. So I guess you could say that, uh, Brandon Sanderson's YA series is kind of a space opera because it pretty much all takes place in space. Um, yeah, that's, that's interesting. Okay, so the next one I have heard a lot recently is epistolary. Um, so that is a literary work in the form of letters related to the writing of letters. Okay, so it's written as a series of documents. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Now I get it. Um, so it'd be like uh, the Illuminae Files, how it's written in kind of like a mixed media format, I guess. Um, yeah, recently electronic documents such as recordings and radio blogs and emails have also come into use. Okay, yeah, so it's, it's kind of like that. I've read a few books that are like that. There was one... Um, Nicholas Sparks novel that I read that was actually entirely like a diary format so that I guess would be considered an epistolary novel okay so here's a weird one that I ran across it's called Bangsian Fantasy and that is a fantasy genre which concerns the use of famous literary or historical individuals and their interactions in the afterlife which is extremely interesting. Um, so I don't think I've ever heard of a book like this. Like, I mean, here's some examples, but these are like really old examples. So it'd be like, I don't know if, you know, uh, Sherlock Holmes died and then we saw him as a ghost or something, you know, and somebody wrote a book about that. Um, that's, that's quite interesting. I've, I don't, again, I don't think I've ever, ever read something like that and the next one is a wuxia um it is a genre of chinese fiction concerning the adventures of martial artists in ancient china um i think that's getting like very very specific <laughs> and a weird a subgenre that we've probably never heard of in the united states because obviously it relates to chinese fiction um, so yeah, that's, it's definitely interesting. It's an interesting name. Um, I guess Wuxia means military and knight errant. Hmm. Okay. So the next one may seem pretty obvious, but it's literary fiction. Um, so this one is a category of fiction that explores any facet of the human condition and may involve social commentary. So this is more for like, Things that books that could be nonfiction, but are actually fiction. So kind of like contemporary novels. Um, yeah, I find that, find that kind of interesting. I mean, it's not something that I'm really interested in actually reading. Um, but it's, it's definitely intriguing to know, you know, what it means anyway. So then for the last one, I really wanted to know what exactly is the difference between a thriller and a horror? Because honestly, sometimes I get very confused by it. Um, so thrillers are meant to thrill and horrors are meant to horrify. Well, of course. So thrillers are predominantly witty, usually twisted and contain better plots while horror films are more often than not predictable. Horror films are less practical and less realistic than thrillers. Horror films usually have more supernatural elements than thrillers. Okay, so 
like horror films would be like the movies that are meant to jump scare you and thrillers would be the ones that are like a psychological thriller um yeah so that's that's an interesting definition i mean it does seem like they do cross genre lines quite a bit so hmm yeah um, anyway, those really aren't books that I generally read a whole lot, so I guess that's kind of why I can't really, can't really grasp the difference very well, but I think after doing some research, I will probably grasp it a lot. All right, so there you have it. That was my 10 terms that I did not know what the heck they meant before I decided to look them up. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed my video, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for watching my video. I upload every Wednesday and Saturday, and I would really love it if you would like, comment, and subscribe to my videos. Have a great day.